This is a teardown of a CyberPower 625VA battery backup. And model number on this, it kind of varies. I don't know why there's three model numbers, but uh, I'm going to go with CP425HGA. And the battery cover on this does require a security Torx bit. It should be a T15, I believe. Uh, nope, might be a T10. Well, there we go. Don't need the drill for that. Yeah, that's a T10 torque security bit. Then from there, you just slide the cover off and the battery's right there. And this unit was dead, but I also did try plugging it in recently, so I'm gonna try not to get too friendly with the stuff inside. Wow, I don't like this design already. Um, well, I'm going to try Let's see if I can get that battery out. The uh, wire is catching on the frame of the battery backup. And I don't want to stick a screwdriver in there or anything conductive because everything is exposed. So I'm going to use this uh, SD card blank. Maybe help me bend that down a little bit. There we go. This uses a really small battery. Let's see here. Where's I don't see a marking. I believe based on the model number, it's probably a five and a half amp hour battery. So if you take the battery out of these, you want to be careful because all this circuit board here is exposed and some of that probably yeah, it might be those trans or transistors. Um, you might not want to touch those. I'm not sure which portion of this would be the output. There's some black and white wires coming out here, which are probably the AC lines. And surprisingly, despite how cheap they were on this and not protecting it, there's a ton of screws holding this thing shut. He's got all these screws right here. And you need a really long number two Phillips screwdriver to get this apart if for whatever reason you're going to tear it apart further. See what happens when we pull off this uh, cover. Well, that's nice. Everything's just kind of sitting there. Nothing's flopping around. There should be grooves. Um, I haven't seen any grooves. <clears throat> I'm not sure what's holding this PCB in. I'm gonna put my gloves on for this. These aren't really probably rated for <laughs> uh, high voltage, but. They should be good enough, so I can just grab this by the cables and the PCB. How is that? Wow. It's just barely held in there, actually. Let's see if I can notch that back in. Hmm. It's not as nice as the APC when I tore apart. So there's no disconnects. I don't like that either. It's not like this is meant to be serviceable by any means, but uh, I just feel it'd be nice if uh, 
if it were, were to be serviced, I guess. I use the drill for these. So these will be the outputs. And uh, just your typical brass strip design. Um, I don't think there's going to be any voltage there, but I don't really feel like shorting those out in front of my face. So I think I'm going to pause, find some safety glasses, and deal with that real quick. All right, well, i got some safety glasses on now and my side cutters. These smaller battery backups tend to not store as much energy as some of the more commercial rack mount ones do. I haven't gotten shocked off of those before, but I have seen some pretty fun sparks that I didn't enjoy. So, kind of a word of caution there, I guess. But, um, yeah, really shouldn't be tearing these things apart anyways. I've been doing it for years, kind of at my own risk, basically. By no means an expert, especially uh, <laughs> with all the shenanigans I've gotten myself into. But yeah, these are just a sna uh, stamped piece of brass that uh, are form formed to fit in the plastic mold. Basically be the same thing on both sides. Although... Based on the way it looks, this is the side that was on battery backup because the wires are coming from the PCB versus this side. This side wouldn't have been on a battery backup because the wires are coming straight off the wall outlet. Which would also mean... Ugh, I don't like that. Um, did those both come off? Yeah, they did. Interesting. Um, so this side would have provided absolutely no surge protection because it was just being powered straight off the wall. Unless there's something I'm missing here. I see some more wires actually. Hmm. What? Probably shouldn't have cut these right away. I should have looked at that. So this is the feed coming in, going through a fuse, and these two wires are going right here. Okay, yeah, no, I'm right. There's uh, there's no surge protection on this end. This wire is going into the PCB, not out, so... Because this is the feed going through the fuse, and these two wires were soldered to this bus bar, basically, right here, which is the hot side of the outlet, and... This would be the non-surge protected side, or not non-surge, but non-battery protected side, which is funny because they label it as surge protected, but I don't understand where the surge protection is. Unless somehow a power surge is going to go through here and into there, and then like the stuff in here is going to stop coming back, but I don't think that's how things work. It's path of least resistance as far as I know, so it's going to go into this connection point on this this strip of brass, and then maybe the branch out, I guess. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe somebody smarter than me will have a better idea of what's going on there, but as far as I can tell, I mean, there's not really any surge protection, because for there to be surge protection, I would assume there'd have to be something in between the input and the output. So that's how most surge protectors are. Although... Maybe, I guess, it could bridge it. Um, these big round things might be uh, mobs. Oh, yeah, they are. It's labeled on the PCB. So maybe I'm stupid, maybe I'm wrong. I guess maybe um, since these wires go to this area here, maybe that's how they do the surge protection. So, yeah, forget everything I just said. I'm dumb. <laughs> Looks like nothing bad's happened, so these must not be hearing a charge. Well, I haven't touched anything yet, so... Yeah, we'll cut it off on this end. A little less scary. There we go. I'm not so worried about the neutral side of things. 
shouldn't have a charge in the neutral. Although, I do want to look at something here now. Yeah, I'll have to get that off of my own time, not on video time. So we got three wires here. These are the input wires. This black, green, and white. Those are going into the PCB around these arch discs, which are labeled MOV1, MOV2 is the little one, and MOV3 is this one here. And this looks like a switching relay. Or it might be. Oh, no, I think that's a capacitor. Uh, I can't tell. I think, it, I think it's a capacitor, actually. Camera won't focus, of course. I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> so, neutral's coming in there. That one's probably the hot. Nope, that's the ground. So that's neutral, hot, in front of my finger. And then that's the ground. Uh, the mauve. So one of the legs of the mauve is tied to the neutral there. And then the other leg, all right, the other leg, the trace is on top of the PCB, so I need something to point with. So in there, yeah, clear from my light. Um, from this leg, it goes straight to ground. And let's look at the other. Kind of hard to do. Um, oh, that's interesting. Uh, looks like, so that, that there in front of my Sharpie is the hot wire, which is tied into this pin here, which is the little mob there. And that ties into the neutral. So what's the big mob doing? The big mob is tied into the ground, and then the other end tied into the hot. Well, that's interesting. So basically, that's the neutral. So it's going over to that, which goes over to the ground, and then the hot is tied into the neutral and the ground. Okay, I think I understand what they're doing here. Um, so, they, they, from what this looks like, of course I may be an idiot, so don't take my word to it, or I don't know if I just screwed up on thinking about the surge protection down there, but from what this looks like, um, they have the hot going from to a mob that goes to the ground, and they also have the hot going from a mob to the neutral, which also goes to the ground. So it's basically a big circle. Um, I don't fully understand how these mobs work. Um, MOV. It stands for metal oxide variester, if I remember right. So yeah, I don't know. I'm probably talking too much about this when I don't have a full understanding of what I'm doing, but. I do have a better idea now that I've looked at the traces. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, not as nice of a design as the APC unit, but it's not really that far off from how a lot of these cheaper battery backups are built. So, yes, I guess I don't really have an opinion about it either way. It's just, uh, just is what it is. So, the rest of this is just going to get recycled. Um, it may have just needed a new battery, but I just decided I don't want to deal with it. I have some nicer APC ones I can use that um, have bigger batteries, basically. So, this is just e-waste, which probably might have been e-waste from the get-go, in all honesty, but it served its purpose, and now it's going to get recycled. So, thanks for watching.